This is our call center. These are all individual stations that we have here. Each one has a dual screen because typically a crisis counselor will have to manage multiple things at the same time as they're trying to attend to their caller. This call center um, stood still as of March. Um, we transitioned over to our homes um, to help respond to the continued calls that were coming in during this pandemic. Domestic Violence Hotline, how can I help you? This is a very loud room. There's always activity. We take over 35,000 calls each year from this very call center. So hearing it so silent and with not people around is interesting. For me, that impactful case, that case that stays with me throughout the day where it's like, you know, you can't breathe until they're safe. I was in that moment where everything was changing. It has been very tough. Yeah, I think our work is more important than ever before. I'm just really impressed, you know, with how we've been able to figure out almost the impossible sometimes. We're the hotline, you know, we have to adapt to everything that gets thrown at us. Uh, there's not one day here that we don't have to adapt. Every day is a new challenge. Every day is a new thing where we learn, okay, we use it for the clients and now the next day is going to be something new. Okay, how do I adapt? So that's why here at the hotline, we're just such like quick thinkers. We're on our feet. We're always like ready to go yeah. and then really innovating with the options that we give, with the options that we give out to clients, you know, because like I said, not every day in the hotline is never the same. And are you somewhere safe right now, ma'am, where you can talk? And it's always something new every day. We hear different stories, different scenarios. And Miguelina, you oversee the overnight hotline team, which is a little bit more complex. It's a little bit more challenging and more difficult. And this has been an added challenge, you know, for your team as well. You're right about that. Um, overnight, we don't have the same resources, um, shelter, uh, taxi. Uh, transportation, even uh, the woman would not be able to walk to certain distance. It has been very tough and, you know, trying to be strategic about trying to still support survivors and getting their basic needs met and everything has been tough yet rewarding because we're still, you know, making an impact at the, at the end of the day. You can't really do anything other than tell them this is the safest way that we can do it. Let's do it now and we'll worry about everything else later after you're in a safe location. It's like with those cases until I hear they're in that taxi headed to a safe location or they're at that lo location if they have their own vehicle, I can't breathe. It's like I feel that even after the end of the day if I'm off. It's still, I can't breathe and I'm checking teams to make sure that this person made it out safe and made it to a safe location. I know one time I had like, I think 10 calls like in a day and it's like, there's one that kind of like sticks out to you that must you, I'm like, did I do enough? Like, is there something that I miss? And I'm trying to like, maybe did I just like, you know, that I, did I do everything I could to really support the client when it, you know, she or he needed it the most. Like what happened? I'm like, what happened? What happened? What happened? And sometimes like I do go back and think about it. At the end of the day, it's a lot of self-care. Uh, you know, like Jessica, she hugs her husband. You know, I only have the dog, so the dog means a lot to me. So I hug the dog, even though sometimes the dog don't want the love, you know. I'm like, you're going to get this love, dog. What has been some of the toughest challenges that you've seen in having to secure shelter for someone? Two of my guys, they have not been able to get out from the, from the house because the perpetrator is there. Uh, one of the perpetrators is working from home. So it's in COVID-19 is not help, it's not helping with the domestic violence. On contrary, it's increasing and it's getting worse. He beat her up so bad that she, he grabbed her with and threw her through the window and to the point where foam started coming out of their mouth and nose. A guy using knives and, and, and cutting these, these children's necks and, and, and trying to burn the house. It's, 
is, is getting worse and worse and worse. You know, the first abusive, uh, physical abusive incident actually started during the COVID incident. It was like, you know, it was a lot of verbal controlling and mental abuse prior to COVID, but I guess the stressors from the COVID had triggered the abuser to where it was now becoming physical. For me, a particular case that really touched me and has made me in, uh, see a certain different perspective of what's going on is the whole instance situation within the family itself, especially right now throughout the whole pandemic, more students, more kids have to stay at home with your with their parents. So you will think that will be a safe place, but I had maybe like over four calls already where the father wants to take advantage of their own daughter. I mean, the number of injuries that we've heard and the number of people that we've placed in our programs coming with injuries and the significance of the injuries has just been mind-blowing. It is just so concerning to hear that this pandemic, you know, has just really pushed that up a notch. People are searching our websites. They're, they're looking at how can I possibly communicate if I can't make that phone call. Um, and they're making those connections and, and we're so lucky to have been able to launch that. This individual is never left alone. She does not have a moment alone, not even to make a phone call. I was able to tell her friend, hey, we have a chat available from 12 to 3 and 9 to 12. If she's able to from her work laptop and to do so safely without the abuser being there, I was like, definitely have her connect with us on the um, chat so that we can safely, safely plan her getaway. So I am totally ecstatic about this chat option. And I feel like, you know, clients that aren't able to make that phone call at least have an avenue to reach out and say hey what can I do a lot of people don't realize that we have these resources available so whenever we do expose those resources to them they their the way how their voice changes in their tone they feel like they actually have an ability to, to change this and to be better and to believe that they're not alone. We need to reinforce that to our clients. We are here for you. Uh, we're not here to judge you. We're not here to tell you what you did wrong. We don't care if you came seven, 10, 20 years ago. We are here for you. Uh, we are here for your children. Uh, let us know what we can do. And our work is more important than ever before. And we will be there to answer every call, to respond in their time of need, doing what we can to keep every survivor safe. Every man, every child, every woman, anybody who needs our support, we will be there.